there they are. Can you Hi, hear me? This is yeah, Rob we... Lowe and John Owen Lowe. Uh, they are very stable. They're very stable. Move in a little bit. You're stable, so I can see you, Johnny. I know, but this is already too close. I don't like how close I have to be to him. Yes, you do. I'm yes, you do. Maria, I'm trying to teach him about proper lighting. Yeah. And the way you have this set up, we were backlit, and I want to be here, and he's uncomfortable with how close we are. I don't think he should be that uncomfortable. Come here. Come I don't know. This yeah, is really he's strange. Sitting there, sitting there for a little snuggle. So Rob and Johnny are the stars of this incredible new series on Netflix. I have seen it. We've recommended it in the Sunday paper. I recommend it to all of you. It's called Unstable. It's hysterical. It is really funny, and it's indicative of their actual real-life relationship, which is actually really funny. And Johnny wrote it. He conceived of it. He's an incredible writer. He has an incredible brain and a big, beautiful brain. And Johnny, <laughs> tell people why you thought this would be a good idea to do. Stop playing with your head. I know. I'm sorry. I'm, like, overwhelmed because he's inches from my face. But thank you for the comment, Maria. Uh, I wanted to tell a story. <laughs> this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me right now. <laughs> so close to me. <laughs> Just uh, talk to me. Talk to me, Johnny. <laughs> okay, I'm going into it. Yes, Maria, as my my godmother and my yes. one of my favorite people on the planet, I'm honing in on you. I'm zenning sure. out with you. Um, you're seeing why I wanted to make the show, because I have the most annoying, but lovely, but annoying parent of all time. I think, honestly, what what's we I noticed that people got a kick out of watching me give my dad a hard time um, yes. through social media. And <clears throat> I wasn't sure what to do about that, but I knew it was entertaining. And then discovering that so many people related to that dynamic of like having a parent that you love, but just has a knack for getting under your skin. And, and the notion that this very strange uh, interpersonal relationship was relatable, but also unique and that the public likes him too. So it makes, my stance on him less, less popular popular or understandable than um, I thought there was comedy in that. So I brought it to him and he was a good sport about so it. Rob, Rob, when Johnny first approached this and said to you, look at, I think that our relationship could actually be a show that people think this is funny the way I poke you on social media and I can actually make a TV show out of this. What was your first reaction? Did you instantly know? Because you're a really good judge of material. Thank you. And you know what, it's as a, a producer, you're always looking for good material and very rarely does the audience come to you and say more of that, please. Yeah. And that's what they did with um, our banter and relationships. So I knew Johnny was on to something that it could work if we could figure out what the world was like. The, the question was, okay, but what, what is the show? It, it, we're not really gonna play actually ourselves because it's been done so well by others. You know, Larry David has done it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Gary Shandling did it. And so I felt like, can we play a version? Can we play characters, actual characters that have enough similarities to who we are to make our thing work? And we came up with Unstable. Well, I think, I think it's actually for people who don't know you, it's pretty much your characters in real life. I Completely. mean, not, it's not that far off. No, I right. completely agree. Right. I mean, your dad is the ice cream scenes when he's sitting there with Fred, you know, eating ice cream late at night, talking to himself, like very involved with his own life. I mean, this is not, you didn't have to go far for the material. I will say I've I have, walked, I have come downstairs into our kitchen um, multiple nights before and found him in that exact position. And instead of it being his therapist, it's your son, Patrick, and they're both just crushing ice cream Pat together. Patrick and I are working on making ice cream eating an Olympic sport. Will you ask him how that's going? Because he was going to be talking to the Olympic Committee. Oh, yeah. The, maybe there's a role somewhere in here for Patrick, for the friend that comes in that, that never leaves, right? Might, but Rob, let me ask you. So when you saw it, because I came to the premiere, what did you think? Did you think, like, this works? This this is me. This is, The audience likes it. And I can honestly say we were laughing hysterically. And I don't laugh at everything you no. do. So I really oh, you're a you are a, you like Cheryl. It's probably why you guys are such besties. Are very very tough critics. I know you love right. me, but yes. you're 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 not an easy laugh. You're not giving it up for anything. And you were laughing, and and Chris Pratt. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. hearing this 
after coming from the theater, I thought, who is this insane person yeah. Yeah. who is laughing at literally every joke, guffawing? And I turned around and it was it was Chris, which made me feel really good. He was definitely our our best invite, strictly because he forced other people to laugh. He was like a plant. Yeah. He literally was like a like a plant. He yeah. was, but it's always good to have somebody in the audience that then starts laughing because then yes. people start laughing at him, and then people start laughing, and yeah. then it goes on and on like that. But what have you learned, Rob, by working with your son like this? Because I know on your other show, Johnny, you're in the writer's room, but you're not actually on camera. So now you're working together. You're taking your personal relationship and you're putting it out with humor to the world. But what is that like to work with your son who's writing your material? It's a dream. I mean, look, as uh, parents of kids of a certain age, we realize all we want to do is figure out ways to spend more time with them. You know, they're out of the world, they have their own lives, they don't need us anymore. So uh, this is, above all else, it's a great excuse to, to be together. Um, but professionally, what's been great is Johnny is um, has such a good aesthetic about comedy, because comedy is so taste driven. You know, there's, you know, it's so subjective. Yeah. So you you want to have somebody who understands and likes the same type of comedy you do. And having Johnny on the set is like having a second brain. It's great. But it's not your brain. It's a very different brain. You have your own brain, right? That's what the show's about. I'm my own person. I'm not you. You have your own brain. Maria, I, I knew that you, of all people, would, would get a special kick out of the show because it's like that answer in and of itself was a great sort of like... Um, metaphor for why the show exists in the first place where it's like what is john owen's impact on set and rob's like he's like my second brain yes it, just, it takes away any and all agency whatsoever <laughs> so talk to me johnny about i sound like cheryl talk to me johnny talk, yeah. to, me, johnny. <laughs> talk to me you know so there's so much now about nepo babies about you know finding your own way you doing this job because it's your dad what did you worry about in doing this? And was it a valid worry? Or what are you actually working out by doing this? Yeah, it's this? a great question. Um, I, so, so annoying. Uh, I think that the Nepo baby conversation is a valid one and that uh, it's important to like acknowledge it if you're in my position. And, and um, even, you know, <clears throat> Patrick, you know, following in the footsteps of people in his family. And we have many friends that do that and do it well and successfully and with grace, I think. And, and the, oftentimes the examples that you hear about are those that are maybe a little less respectful or grateful. And that's what the media likes to hold on to. But I think as long as you approach that topic with a certain level of self-awareness and understanding of the privilege that you've been given, uh, then I think that helps to provide a healthy perspective. I think for me specifically, the show was born out of a desire to get out of this man's proximity as I now sit six inches from his face. But I know that this was my story to tell right now and that people, you know, based on the reactions we're getting are, are relating to it and, and, and being entertained by it. And then the next story I get to tell, hopefully, will have nothing to do with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I think that the, I think I started by saying, you know, that I, as you both know, work with Patrick. Yeah. I've worked with Christina. I love working um, with my kids. And I think there are millions of people who, whether it's in the restaurant business, it's in building businesses, all over the world, people work. Uh, if they're lucky enough, they try to work with their kid or if their kid wants to work with them, sometimes they don't in the beginning and they find their way back. Uh, to working um, together, but there is sometimes it's difficult sometimes to work with adult kids, right, Rob? Uh, yeah, I mean, anytime you're with family, it's just you care more, right? You know, you know, if you're working with you know one of your other peers, you know, you go home and it you, there's a world in which you don't have to think about them at all. That's obviously never going to happen with family. Um, I just wanted to add my take on the whole nepo baby thing is is like. I fundamentally don't understand the, the, I get it for Johnny, but, but like, what, like, so take it to its logical conclusion, what, I'm not supposed to 
we're not supposed to have Michael Douglas movies because yeah. is he the son of Kurt or or I'm not supposed to be obsessed with uh, Charlie Woods playing golf because his dad is Tiger. I mean, I, I don't I don't get it. I I love I love. One thing you can count on is for Rob to navigate topics like this with a lot of nuance. That's always been is but that. I think what's what's really important here is is that you know Johnny has worked in the writers' room that you came up with this concept yeah. right yourself. This came out of that big beautiful brain that you exercised all through school. So I think it's but I think to Johnny's point, you know, having some self awareness about privilege, recognizing that things come with it. But also, as I say to my kids all the time, at the end of the day, it'll be your work uh, that will be the marker. You can get a foot in the yeah. door, but you have to stay in. You have to work over the years. When I started in journalism 40 years ago, they said, you know, you'll last a week. And here we are 40 years later. It's your work at the end of the day that will continue. And I was just talking, since, you know, you guys are on the show and you're having lots of laughs and you're letting people kind of look in. I also thought because this is a holy week, this is Passover week, it's Easter week, a lot of families come together uh, over Passover, over Easter. And a lot of people who follow the Sunday paper, who follow me are dealing with adult children, right? And the challenges that come with dealing with adult children. And you guys have been so open about your own sobriety, about navigating that road together. What advice, Rob, would you have, I think, for people who are struggling with kids who are adults, adult children? And I'm actually, I have this book that I'm doing a piece on the Today Show tomorrow. It's called, it comes out in two weeks, You and Your Adult Child, uh, because there are 65 million people with kids 20 and up, right? Mm -hmm. And so many of them are dealing with, you know, financial issues, relationship issues, drug issues, sobriety issues. And how would you advise a parent who is dealing with a kid who has some sobriety challenges? What's your best advice to them? And then Johnny, I would ask you the same because there'll be families gathering this week. Well, first of all, anytime families get together, that is a uh, rocket fuel for your addiction. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. But, you know, I, I, whenever I get the opportunity to talk to families or adolescents or anybody going through that dynamic, I always try to remind them that the addict, alcoholic, whoever's struggling, they're never going to be able to get any recovery until they want it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're not going to be able to do it because you want them to or, or because they're going to lose their job or they're going to lose their marriage. Unfortunately, none of that makes any difference. They have to want it. So really, all one can do is, is do what you can to keep them from making egregious life decisions or actions that would really irreparably harm them mm -hmm. and, and, and lead by example and hope and pray for the day where the light goes on and they're ready to change. Because getting sober is very, very simple. It's not easy, but it is very, very, very simple. I like that though, but it, it's like be an example, be there, keep the light on as Father Greg Boyle says, keep the light on, keep the invitation out there. Uh, Johnny, from a young adult's point of view, um, what advice do you have for other young adults who might be going home for Pass Passover, who might be going home for Easter, who are <laughs> struggling with their parents? be it with sobriety issues or other yeah. issues? It's a really good question. Um, you know, one thing I know that, that helped me when I, it's kind of a two, two pronged answer. There's, there's the sobriety aspect and then there's like the mental health aspect, which both are, they're, they're intertwined, but one can exist uh, separate to the other, which is like, <clears throat> you know, so many young people around my age, adult children that have to go spend time or get to go spend time with their family, it brings up a lot of unresolved or unattended to, um, look, trauma is a word that carries a very heavy connotation, but yeah, you can use something else like, you know, issues, issues or, or even just mem memory, memories, Trigger. triggers. triggers. Yeah. Whatever Rob's, bit he's doing this right I'm now. I'm not doing the bit. For me I'm right deadly now. serious right now. But the point is, is like, it's gonna pull out stuff that 
is what about gonna... the wait, wait, what about the framing that's happening right now? Well, you don't need to be in this. Wait, place. Johnny, Johnny is answering this question uh, from his point of view. I so know. Go ahead, John. I, I understand that, Maria, but that he's framing it like that. That's no there. No, no like... not there. Go, go. Let me see you, Johnny. There. Okay. Okay. Come on, Johnny. All right. To finish my my answer. Rob, um, Rob get out of the frame for a second. <laughs> Go, Johnny, speak up. Uh, um, I have found that it is it is important when dealing with these like deeply personal familial moments that pull out, you know, um, residual triggers and trauma, or whatever it is to be as openly communicative about it as possible and to say, you know, hey, this thing makes me uncomfortable or to establish boundaries or to um, just not internalize it. That's 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 going to continue whatever sort of emotional stressor or, or uh, trigger. It just makes it more poignant, more powerful down the line. And um, sobriety-wise, for young people, I mean, I, I I think yeah. To echo what Rob said, family stuff is a big trigger, and it can be. It doesn't have to be a bad thing. It should be a good thing. You should be uh, encouraged by your family's support if it's present. And if it isn't, you should uh, focus on supporting yourself, I guess. But I just know that I'm grateful for the fact that I had a supportive family. Yeah. I know there's a lot of people. That, and yeah, so I think that's what's real. You had a you had and have a supportive yes. family who kept the light on, yeah. who jumped in, and a community yourself that you've built up yeah. of, of uh, um, who supported your sobriety. And so there are so many uh, programs out there now that uh, help so many young people in sobriety, right? So I think sometimes I've talked to young people who think like, oh, I'll be all alone in that space. No one else my age is sober. And there's so many. You were how old, Johnny, when you got sober? 42. I was young and I remember I just want to say something because this is important this was my main thing was was well I guess I'm just not gonna have fun I was just gonna say this. like yes. I was young and I and I, I was I was still in college I was still in a fraternity I was I remember just thinking like I want to be alive and I want to feel good and I want to be healthy so I will prioritize that over fun but I was in this place of acceptance of like I guess that just means there's no more fun in my life and what I'm so happy to be able to tell people and what I do tell young people that are coming up to me with questions about this is like, I've never had more fun. I've never been, and, and this sounds like maybe BS to a young person who's struggling, but like truly, I have no reason to lie to you. I'm none. We're not even like in a organized meeting. Or anything. This is just me talking. Like my life is infinitely better. I have way more fun in without the presence of alcohol um, or drugs or any sort of, you know, mind altering substance. And all of my relationships are better. Like everything has gotten so much better. And I'm not saying everybody needs to never do that stuff again, but if you have a problem or suspect you have a problem or aren't feeling good about yourself, like life can be so much better than you imagine it, even at a young age. And I know people, I got sober at 22. I thought that was young. I've met people who got sober at, 17, 16, whenever, 25. Yeah. I, I know you got sober at 77. Wow. Like whenever, whenever it is, yeah. you know, it's always there if you want. I, I love that. So many people on here saying congratulations. I uh, have been just gotten sober. I have a kid who I want to get sober, um, et cetera. And I think what Rob is saying is to, uh, that has to come from the person, what we can do as parents of adult children um, that word is even odd, children, adult children. But uh, there's this, this long period of time where you have to parent of adult children, right? All the books are for toddlers and teenagers. And then there's this whole kind of 18, 20, you know, that involves new partners, that involves finances, that involves jobs, that involves working together, that involves sobriety issues, that involves you know, addiction, all of these things. And so I'm looking forward actually to talking to this guy. I'm doing it for the Today Show, also doing it for um, 
the Sunday paper. It's called You and Your Adult Child. And I was thinking about it. So I called Johnny this morning to say, like, can we talk about this? Because I think it's such a great issue. And you guys are working uh, together. That probably wouldn't have happened, I bet, had you not found your sobriety, Johnny. Had you not been clear enough to say, I want to write. I want to work my way up. I can see where this is funny, I can develop this, I have my own confidence, done your own work to kind of come together and be able to hold your own ground with this person sitting next to you. 100%, 100%, I don't, I, uh, I don't have anything I have right now in my life and I'm not where I am right now if I didn't, um, if I didn't make the changes I made when I was uh, an even younger man. And uh, I'm just like full of gratitude. Is the truth. So yeah. I want Same. everybody to watch Unstable. These both of these guys have their unstable moments. I've seen them, but by and large, they're very stable. Due in large part to Cheryl. Uh, yes, I think she's honors. out there. How is Cheryl? Ooh. How is Cheryl not giving us a, a a little thing saying Cheryl was on here? I would add Cheryl if I knew how, but I did a whole thing about her incredible jewelry. And then we also have Maddie Lowe, who's not on here too, yeah. but is also a big part of this family and a big part of the tweaking. I'm sure he'll find his way. And both of these boys are individuals uh, at, in their own right. I'm always, you know, they're uh, individuals, human beings in their own right. They happen to have a well-known dad and a very accomplished mom, but individuals in their own right. I'm big believers. Uh, in that and, and in stressing that. And Johnny has written this, worked his way up in the writer's room, worked hard in the writer's room. I, I, was, uh, say, I wanna just shout out, I was getting coffees and lunches as a writer's PA for three years. And uh, yeah. I, nobody delivered coffee like you. No one. No. I smoked that job, Maria. I, I mean, I love that. I did that when I was that age yeah. too. Coffee, coffee, coffee. And I think there's a lot to be said. Logging people's tapes, working the overnight ship, working your way up. Somebody said, well, people don't do that anymore. But I think it's a great thing to want to work your way up, learn what's out there, uh, find out what you like, what you don't like. That's a big part of adult children, right? In your 20s, figuring out what you like, what you don't like, where your passion goes, where your purpose is. And you can have a passion for acting, for writing, and a purpose for spreading a message of sobriety, and they can all go together, and they can go together in a hit show, yeah. like Unstable. So I'm so, they're in New York, they're in New York on this Holy Monday, uh, publicizing their show. Remind people again, what is the show, Rob? The show Fiction. is called Unstable. It is currently streaming on Netflix, co-created by John Owen Lowe and myself. And it's, uh, it's, it's laugh out loud funny. It is a feel good, you're gonna, it's just an unadulterated, fun, fast watch. There you go. I, I love you both. I know you're really busy. I, I'm so glad that thousands of people came on here today uh, to watch Ooh. somebody. Some people said that they've watched it already. Others are going rushing to watch it from around the globe. This is global, right? Unstable. South global. Africa, Argentina. Yeah. I mean, this is amazing. The people yeah. who are watching. And you are global. These guys are global. They oh. are global. And this story is global. Remember, adult kids, you have the for a really long time, God willing. So we got to get our act together as parents who have adult children, right? And as you said, we, we, we have to find a way into their lives because they actually don't, they can decide whether they want to hang with us or not, That's right? right. They have a choice now. They had to go on vacations with us in the past. Now they don't. Yeah. Well, they kind of do. I guess. Yeah, you're right. 